Hello and welcome to another episode of Be the Love to Awaken Our Souls. Thank you again so much for tuning in this week. I'm Stacey Musial. And I am Brenda Carey. We are your co-hosts and souls on the journey. We invite you to be a part of our Be the Love tribe in support of your spiritual growth and transformation to come home to your divine self. Let's raise our vibration to love. Before we get into today's conversation, let's settle in with an opening intention and prayer. So find a place of comfort for yourself. If possible, close the eyes down or just draw your attention more inward. Slow your breath down. Really fill up your whole torso with air, breathing in and out. Breathing in love and joy at this time of this new year. Exhaling and releasing out what no longer serves you. We are just calling in this energy, this new beginning energy. Allowing us to move forward with joy, with ease and inspiration. On every exhale, releasing any tension, whether that's physical tension or mental tension, just allowing yourself to come home, to connect with universe, God, spirit, filling up with her love, being fully present with what is honoring this new year and new season, sending gratitude for all that is to come. And so it is. Aho. Aho. Uh, so as of this recording, happy new year. It's 2024. And I truly hope you have had some opportunity to do some reflection uh, from this past year, maybe what has served you, what has not served you. And those can be such amazing learning opportunities. That's part of our conversation today. I know there's this emphasis on jumping into the new thing of doing, whether that's, you know, a new workout schedule or a new health regimen, or maybe getting finances in order or organizing the house. I mean, there's so many things that I feel like this doing energy sort of invokes. However, if we look at nature and in particularly in the Northern hemisphere, we are in the season of winter. Winter is usually not the season to be doing, doing, doing. If we really pay attention, uh, things are in hibernation right now. Things are more in a state of just resting and not just sleeping, resting, but just truly having a restorative time so that when spring does come, we are ready to plant those new seeds. So for those of you, depending on how you are feeling at this time of year, maybe you are ready to go and to do the things and you've got some amazing dreams and goals. Maybe you've made a Sankulpa. Uh, we talked about that in a previous episode. Check that out. Uh, your heart's deepest desire. Maybe you're coming from this very heart-centered place and you want to dive into goals and dreams for yourself. Or on the flip side, maybe you aren't feeling super ambitious. You're not into the doing, but you definitely are in a healing state, a restorative state, and that's okay too. So just being in this place of acceptance for wherever you are at, and that's what we are going to dive deep into in this conversation. Absolutely. You know, I think um, traditionally, yeah, we think about the new year and think about, oh, we, you know time to set intentions. What do we want the new year to, to look like? And how do we want it to be? And, and so, you know, I think it's, it's coming back right from, from this place of, of doing into this place of being, I know for myself, just, you know, in my personal journey this year, it's really, kind of helped me wake up to that a little bit more because traditionally I have been, 
you know, the, I've been doing like I have every year on, on New Year's, you know, I create the vision board, the energy, the, the new word, the intention for what this year is. And, you know, I, one of my intentions for the year was to develop this unwavering, deep, soulful presence with mm-hmm. myself. I love that presence. Yes. Mm, and it's really giving me this opportunity to to be present and because i have had you know just just as a you know self disclosure i you know i've had this autoimmune condition for for many years and it's been um what i thought was very healed and i haven't had any flare ups in years from it and 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 i you know, over the holidays, I accidentally um, ate gluten, which is a, a you know trigger for for that, and had some other additional stresses stressors in my life, and it's kind of like this perfect storm. So it it actually is a blessing for me in this way because it's allowed me to really slow down and find you know the the joy in connecting with myself Mm. and not feeling like I have to do so much. And I know this is just a a time right now, this time to go within, and this is going to be a temporary time because I, you know, I get excited, you know, when I do create and and have passions in my life and, 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 and I know that this is also teaching me to go deeper, a deeper connection with myself so I can truly, truly open up to a deeper presence with, within myself. Mm-hmm. My body, my mind, my spirit, I feel is all working together right now to, to help me embody what this deep presence and connection with myself is and, and also come in, into this acceptance around being, being on such a deeper level with, with myself. Yeah. It's so good to hear you say that because you are a good manifester. I will say that. Um, I've known you for quite a while now and I'm like, oh yeah, Stacey will manifest it. I mean, that's just like, it's done. It's it's a done deal. So it's <laughs> awesome to hear you talk about joy and being because interestingly enough, that is my Sankalpa feeling word for this year uh, is joy is my true intuitive nature. Um, Sankalpa meaning a heart centered resolution. And so, as you mentioned, usually you're in doing mode this time of year, you've got goals lined up. And what happened for me is when I align with joy, I'm relying, number one, on my intuition, which sometimes I feel like that gets squashed by all of the really loud external voices, especially in the realm of running a business for me. I really had to look at last year, like all the places where I was at, all the social media places, all the workshops, all the coaching, all just all the things. And what ended up happening is when I was really honest with myself and trusting my intuition, it was immediate, like, you don't need all that. You don't need all that. You just need, so my, what worked for me and what I'm following this year, the list got really small. And I actually got very nervous about that. And this old pattern of like, oh, but is that enough? Is that enough to bring in the ideal clients that I want? Is that enough to put out, you know, the presence for the podcast even? And the answer was, yes, it is enough because I am enough. And I think that's how we can align our heart-centered, heart's deepest desire to what we truly want. I mean, really look and trust our intuition that it's not so much about doing a lot of things oftentimes. It's about doing what feels right, doing the right things for us in this moment and just following that lead day by day by day. Yes. And and I think it's, you know, that that being and finding that comfort in that discomfort, you right. know, when we're expecting or we're, you know, we have in our mind this certain expectation of how things should be or how what we want to do or what, you know, we've been taught or how we, you know, we've always done things, right? And and so when we stop and really pay attention to how does this feel in this moment and 
letting go of the expectations of how something we feel, quote, should look, you know, it really helps us to start honoring ourselves and then creating from a place of spaciousness and letting go of the energy that is maybe uh, this forceful energy, like trying Mm. to force something, force ourselves to make something happen when we maybe don't have the energy or we don't, you know, we we don't know another way, but we're not giving room for other ways to occur if we keep doing the same thing the way we've always done. I think there's a, there's a quote, right? What's the definition of insanity? (laughs) And so, you know, this is, this is where I'm at. I'm, I feel like I'm almost kind of I'm up leveling. That was part of my other intention. I'm up leveling right now, even though it doesn't feel like I'm up leveling hmm. by allowing myself the space to heal and to really nurture and honor that like my body and my mind, my spirit is, you know, it's it's going through a regeneration process. It's helping me to heal the underlying root of what is at this. And so I have to give that time. I have to give that spaciousness, even if it doesn't, if, even if it's not the way I, I wanted it to be, I have to allow that spaciousness so I can heal and so I can up level and come out stronger on the other side. And because yeah. when we push ourselves, we become sicker. And we become, Absolutely. you know, our mind and our bodies, our spirits are, they, they, they really, um, they suffer from, you know, that, that push when we're not coming from a place of love and nurturing and Absolutely. energy. And for, for me, letting go of all the how to's, like you mentioned, like the pushing or feeling it gets forced. Like I, I. I'm a person I kind of would like to know the future. I mean, I don't I know I'm not the only one in saying that, but uh I kind of want to at least have a little bit of an idea of like how how is this dream or goal going to work out and really surrendering that process and just holding space for for me it's for joy. Like what really lights me up? Like the, when I dive into, you know, whether it's work or whether it's like personal dreams and goals that I'm considering, I always come back to, okay, is this really lighting me up? Uh, and granted, some of the tasks involved may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but is it eventually going to lead me in the direction of where I want to go? And so if any of our listeners, if you're struggling with like, well, you know, is this goal or is this dream something that I really want to do or do I need to sit with it more? And for me, it's really getting quiet and noticing the feeling. Sometimes my initial feeling isn't always like a positive. Yes. Sometimes it's like, oh, it's, it's more just like, this is like you mentioned, this is uncomfortable or this is getting out of my familiar. So there might be some nervousness there, even a touch of anxiety. So really grounding myself with my breath and being like, okay, universe has my back first of all. And does this really light me up? Like, do I feel it? Usually it's around my heart space. Sometimes it's in my solar plexus, but like, where can I feel that within my body when first of all, I'm grounded. Otherwise, the energy just runs up to my head. That's kind of the place it usually likes to go. I think that's pretty common for people. Like we're just walking heads, overthinking heads a lot of the time. And so really getting into my breath, calming my whole nervous system down, and then asking, okay, does this dream really light me up? Does it align with my heart's deepest desire? Hmm. Yes. And, and taking time, I love, you know, what you said, you know, just about the surrendering process, right? right? And I think there's so much misconception in what surrender truly means. You know, it's a lot of people that I, I work with, you know, um, come in and, and we talk about surrendering and, and it feels like they're giving up. And that's what yeah. uh, the message I think has been, but it's really, it's not about giving up, right? It's about surrendering and it's about um, 
letting go yep. of what of we control. think of the control, <laughs> right? The, you know, and, and how does that feel in your body? You know, because it, it's so subtle, but the body really shows you and shares with you, you know, when you're holding on to something, do you feel your body tense up? Do you feel it, you know, try to hold on? And, you know, what does that feel like in your body? I know for me, it's just like, you know, this this tension that comes up. And so when I breathe into that tension, I'm like, oh, there it is. There's the, you know, letting go. There's the surrender. It doesn't mean I'm not, you know, I, and it doesn't mean like I'm, I'm giving up everything. It just means I'm just letting go of control of what is, what is present for me in this moment. And each moment is going to unfold. And I know it always feels like something is going to last forever, you know? And so we get <laughs> into that fear of like, are these emotions going to last forever? Is this feeling? Is this like, you know, this energy? But, you know, it's really, it's just being present with what is. And when you can truly, truly be present and surrender to what is, it actually unfolds quicker. But the more we resist, the more it continues to hang on and and you know and and hold on but but i think it's also recognizing and learning from the lessons and how do we deepen our those lessons and deepen the connection we have with ourselves when we truly truly listen to what's what's coming up for us in this present moment yeah absolutely this just makes me think of um one of my clients highly sensitive soul just like myself and she kept talking about, well, you know, I get this, like, she called it a bearing down feeling in her gut. You know, it was almost like, and she was barely breathing, like she was having some um, digestive issues, but she was noticing they were being triggered by, um, shall we say, button pushers of family members around the holiday season. And so she noticed when she was around these individuals, she would have this like, bearing down sensation like she had to hold it down and she wasn't speaking from her her truth you know she'd stay really quiet and she'd have this sensation in kind of her lower gut of like I just I gotta hang on and over a process of you know weeks working together she realized that that was her body signal of saying hey it's time to surrender. It's time to let go. We can't control what other people say or think, creating better boundaries around that. I think that's a part of really honoring our beingness um, is also, you know, maybe having better boundaries with people that do trigger us. Not that we can always totally, you know, not be around them, especially if they're family members, but noticing that connection of like, okay, what's the trigger within my body? What's the physical symptom or the mental emotional symptom? Maybe it's anxiety that's coming up. Start to notice, like you mentioned earlier, this perfect storm that starts, I think, really subtly and then revs up and then revs up. And I think we don't even notice sometimes because our bodies are so forgiving. They'll be like, oh, okay, I, I can handle this little, this little pain or tension. And then that becomes our new normal set. And then something bigger comes in. And then it's like, okay, the body and the mind will, okay, I can, I can take care of this, but then it keeps slowly increasing. What is it like the lobster boiling in the pot or something like mm. that <laughs> until the lobster boils. Um, and that's sometimes I think how it feels for many people. Like we don't realize until all of a sudden the autoimmune does flare up or the anxiety gets so bad, you know, that we, we need uh, medication or we need help because it's so unbearable. So that's something to be aware of in this new year of new beginnings is honoring those boundaries of what is a definite go and like what is a definite no or, or not now. Yes, absolutely. I think, and, you know, it's, we're, we're coming into, you know, this space of, you know, maybe new understandings and, you know, I, I think it's, it's so important to, to listen to our bodies when, when they do. And, and it doesn't mean like, it doesn't mean it is a, a not now, you know, or I mean, an, an absolute no, but it can mean, you know, it's maybe not right now, not in this mm -hmm. moment. And, you know, 
And our bodies are our barometers, right? And so when we truly, truly tap in and connect with ourselves into the space of this embodiment of what it feels like to truly, truly, truly deeply connect with yourself. And so, you know, taking taking a moment each day, each morning to really align and connect with what what do you need in this moment? How mm. often were you asked as a child what you need? And so sometimes when when we are not asked what we need, and it's not something that is is maybe you're used to or is a comfortable comfortable question, right? It's so important to start finding that comfort in asking yourself what you need. And so, you know, I know it's just, it's just been, it's a switch of trying to, to really uncover, okay, so when you wake up in the morning, you know, I invite you to just put your hand over your heart space and your other hand over your solar plexus and really tune in, taking a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and doing that three times and just connecting with your heart space in that moment. And just asking yourself, what do I need? in this moment? Is it a glass of water? Is it another breath? Is it, is it maybe a day off? Is it a deep meditation? You know, just listen to whatever that is, a cup of hot tea, and just finding whatever would really nurture you in this moment. Maybe it's getting up and going and, and putting on some music and dancing and just moving your body and just allowing your, your being to just allow it to move in a way that is nurturing for you. What does that feel like for you? What is that? What do you need? And, and just listen and allow yourself to honor that and allow yourself to really connect and you know maybe it's a word maybe it's maybe it's a a saying or statement maybe it's just hearing i love you today and maybe it's a feeling what is the feeling that you're noticing in your body is it is it something that needs to be expressed you know, whatever that is for you. So allowing yourself to just connect deeply and knowing that, you know, all the all the other doings will get done. And right now it might be just this beingness that you need. And that is okay. If you feel this resistance or this discomfort in your body, I invite you to just take a breath into that allow the breath just move that energy it's just energy and that discomfort of sitting still or just being has been embedded in our consciousness for so long it's just working with that energy and just allowing that energy just to move and just coming back to the present, coming back to your heart space and allowing yourself to continue to find connection deep within yourself. And just doing a practice like this each morning when you wake up, maybe it's throughout the day, you know, just finding the space for yourself. How often do you find space for yourself where, you know, we're so used to giving space to others, right? And and so it's time to just really connect and deepen that connection with, with ourselves on such a deep, deep level. And so I just invite this energy in, I invite this practice in and just allowing it to be, allowing yourself to just be and know that 
know that it will, everything else will get done, things will shift and, and you will just connect with, with what's true for you right now to fully, fully connect in this here and now moment, because that is the only moment we have is the one right now. So true. And so it is. Thank you for that closing meditation. And thank you for listening to Be The Love Podcast. I'd like to give a shout out to Ellen Adams, who is our newest Patreon supporter. If you would also like to donate to this podcast, you can find us on patreon.com forward slash Be The Love Podcast. And you too can find a spiritual home with us. Let's connect on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We always appreciate five-star reviews on iTunes and Spotify as well. I'm Brenda Carey, <clears throat> excuse me, and as a holistic healer, I offer coaching and online programs to guide people in their sacred path to vibrant health. My website is sacredpathyogaandreiki.com. And I'm Stacey Musial. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in whole person, deep soul healing. You can find out more about my work, my book, and programs at awakenyourempoweredsoul.com. You can check out our links in the show notes. And stay tuned for more episodes being released on Mondays at 5.55 a.m. Mountain Time.